<laughs> Hello everybody. It has for sure been a while and of course for good reason. Uh, definitely been going through a lot and but I'm back. I'm back. Today's video is going to be kind of a different one and not the happiest of videos. I wish that it was, but of course it's not. I wanted to start this channel and have this channel so I could share my experiences because I feel like, you know, your story is the strongest piece of power that you have. And so I want to share my story, but if I'm being super honest, I'm, I'm tired of being sad. I'm tired of being depressed. I'm tired of just feeling down. And so, I wanted to kind of talk about what I've been going through, but keep my hands busy, you know, do something that I enjoy, like makeup, to just like keep myself calm and like be able to get through this. And so today, just like I said, I'm going to be doing my makeup and talking about my molar pregnancy. So if you do not follow me on my other social medias, I will leave them down below. But basically I shared that we were expecting baby number two and we were super excited, um, but it ended in a molar pregnancy. And so I will explain what that is later, but I just wanted to kind of share my story and share my experience so that if maybe if you've lost a pregnancy or you're going through the exact same thing, a molar pregnancy that uh, you will know that you're not alone and you'll know that even though it's a very rare thing and only like I think uh, Google said only 20,000 cases a year in the US um, so it's very rare but it does happen and it does occur and you know no matter how early along or far along you were it's upsetting so let's get into the makeup Basically, it all started at my eight-week ultrasound. I found out that I was pregnant really early on. Uh, I was like a little under four weeks when I found out that I was pregnant. We had to wait an entire month to go to our eight-week ultrasound, or even longer than that. Um, a little over a month of waiting. And of course, we were super excited really wanting another one and we were trying so this you know was a happy time so we go to our eight week ultrasound and even before the doctor said anything I knew that something was wrong because you know I've been pregnant before I look so funny uh, I've been pregnant before I know what you're supposed to see when you go there there was no baby, there was no heartbeat, there was no nothing, and she just had a worried look on her face. So she stops the ultrasound and she basically says that you have had a chemical pregnancy. And I will preface this by saying that I did not have a very good experience with this doctor. I was, you know, kind of really upset about how everything was handled. But anyways, so she said, you have a chemical pregnancy that is the only thing that it could possibly be. So she, then she starts to explain to me a miscarriage and what that's going to be like. As she's explaining this, it was just like so fast. It was just like ultrasound, stop the machine. You have chemical pregnancy. Let me explain to you kind of what a uh, miscarriage is going to be like. And just like my brain didn't even have time to process what was going on. And I, like my limbs started to feel tingly and heavy. And I, I think I was honestly in shock because I'm not the type of person who thinks that like, oh, that only happens to other people or, you know, that could never happen to me. I'm not that type of person, but you know, even if you know that there are many bad things that can happen, in every pregnancy, it doesn't stop 
you from, you know, being shocked and upset when it happens to you. So I was like, I don't feel good. I'm going to pass out. And so they let me take my mask off because I was having a hard time breathing. And they gave me like juice and crackers and stuff. But she basically said that, you know, this is what it is. But to be sure, we're going to do some uh, blood tests to check your uh, pregnancy hormone levels. So if you are not familiar, those are called HCG levels. So we're gonna check your HCG levels to see what's going on. And we're going to do a high resolution ultrasound. So another reason, and then this is like a very petty thing compared to like obviously what the situation is, but another reason that it, me and David were kind of irritated with this lady is She's like, okay, I need you to immediately go downstairs to the lab and get your blood work done. So like, go down there now, like go. I'm like, okay. So we get down there, we like, we're rushing because she made it just seem so urgent. And so we get down there and she hasn't even put the order in for my blood work. She just like, they're like, sorry, we don't have a record of like an order for blood work. And I'm like, I literally was just upstairs with my doctor and she said, to get this blood work. So we wait probably a half hour. They finally get the order for the blood work. So there is no reason to rush down the stairs. Uh, but anyways, so I digress. I'm like bawling my eyes out basically. I'm very devastated because, you know, I obviously wanted this baby so bad and it was just, it's devastating. Like, that's all I can really say. I don't even have words to describe how upsetting it was. Um, but anyways, so I'm like wearing a mask and I don't know if you guys, you probably have, it's, this time has been rough for everyone, but if you've bawled your eyes out with a mask on, it's like not a fun time <laughs> to say the very least. You're like snots coming down, your tears are coming down, your mask was getting wet and you like don't want to lift your mask to like, you know, blow your nose or do anything because you're afraid that everyone's going to think you have coronavirus. And so I'm just like sitting here struggling, but I get my blood work done. I go the next day to get a high resolution ultrasound, which, you know, the ultrasound people aren't allowed to tell you anything, but I can tell there's no baby in there. So basically I'm waiting on my doctor to call me to tell me the results of my blood tests and to tell me the results of this high resolution ultrasound that I just took. Now I don't know if the first doctor got the vibes that we weren't fans of her or if it was just another doctor that was on call that day but a different doctor called us and it was this really nice lady and she basically says okay your your pregnancy hormones are really high and so that could be a positive thing but you know let's stay hopeful here but you know know that it could be you know a chemical pregnancy it could be an ectopic pregnancy and she said, what my hope is, is that you are earlier long than you thought. Now, to be honest, this didn't give me much hope because I am very diligent about uh, tracking my cycle, tracking when I'm ovulating. We were like actively trying to have a baby. We weren't just not using protection. Like I was tracking everything. And so I knew when I ovulated, I knew you know, when my period was, I knew all of that stuff. I was like very sure on the dates because I, I track it and I put it in an app. So anyways, that didn't give me much hope, but at this point I just, I wanted to hold on to any hope that I possibly could. And especially because when I first found out about it, I was so just, sad and depressed that I couldn't even take care of Simeon. I couldn't take care of myself. I didn't shower. I like laid in bed and either slept or stared at 
the wall. I, the only other time that I have ever felt like that was when my mom passed away. And I don't know if I've explained this, you know, in a different video, but I'm a very happy-go-lucky person. I don't know if you guys can tell that, but I, I try to see the silver lining. I try to be positive all the time. And so to be sad for me is not a, a good feeling, which is like a duh. But not only is being sad upsetting to me because I'm sad, but it's also uncomfortable for me because I'm in a happy state all the time. So, you know, all my family was telling me to have hope and, you know, just try to be positive because if there is a baby in there, the best thing to do is not to stress and it's to be happy. So, you know, I tried to kind of pull up my britches and be positive for this baby that was possibly in there, you know, thinking maybe I just ovulated abnormally late and I just didn't know it, you know, whatever. I wanted us to wait two weeks and then we would get another ultrasound because in two weeks, if I wasn't already at eight weeks, this is when I would be at eight weeks. So we wait the two weeks and I'm trying to be positive, but the thing about molar pregnancies is your your hormones are abnormally high, like extremely high. And it causes your like pregnancy symptoms to be elevated. So they're more than what they would be if you were just normal pregnant. So I was so incredibly nauseous that I puked a lot. I, there, I had so much food aversions that there was like two things that I could eat. And I just, I felt like I couldn't live my normal life because I was so sick all the time. Every time I stood up, it was like I was just gonna barf everywhere. And it was so upsetting to me. And it, again, made me kind of depressed because even though we're in lockdown, we're in quarantine and nobody's leaving the house, which is, you know, comforting because it's not like I'm missing anything. Just the little trips to the store, just, you know, the little walks that we would take with Simeon outside, you know, is kind of what everyone's living for right now in quarantine, just getting outside for a second, but I didn't even feel up to doing that. And so I didn't feel like myself. I just felt yucky all the time. And so I can't even imagine living a life with like chronic pain. I, I can't even fathom that. Like every day feeling like that. I don't know how people with chronic pain do it. I really don't. But two weeks go by and we go in for our second high resolution ultrasound and again i've been pregnant before so i know what it's supposed to look like and there was no baby and there was no heartbeat and i was again devastated i was trying to be so hopeful and positive but you know i really wanted just a miracle to happen and for there to be a baby in there but there was not Usually you get your ultrasound and then your doctor calls you later with the results, but instead the ultrasound lady comes back in the room and she's like, you know, we're going to have a doctor talk to you right now. And of course, you know that if they're giving you special doctor time, that it's bad news. It's not good news. So they take us to this special elevator in the back of the clinic and they take us up to this like private area where we wait an hour to see a doctor. We finally see a doctor and he tells us, you have what's called molar pregnancy. And I'm just, I've never heard of that in my whole life. So he explains what it is. Now, I'm not a doctor, so I, I don't know if I'm explaining this perfectly correctly, but what I got from it is that there's a partial molar pregnancy and there is a full molar pregnancy. So a partial is where you your body made a baby, but it also made a tumor out of your placenta cells. 
So you have a baby and a tumor in your uterus. A full molar pregnancy is where your body did not make a baby, but it just made this tumor, again, out of your placenta cells. So what I had was a full molar pregnancy, which means that I had this tumor made out of my placenta cells and my pregnancy hormones, which were just abnormally elevated, were growing this tumor. And basically what it does is if it's not taken care of right away, it can grow and spread throughout your whole body and basically act like a cancer. This was obviously scary and devastating to hear. I want you guys to know that if you lose a baby, it is not your fault. Like, I am a spiritual person, I'm a religious person, so in my mind, the enemy tries to get in your head and he tries to tell you a bunch of lies, like you don't deserve this baby, that's why you don't get to have it. Or, you know, it was because you skipped your prenatal that one day. Or it was because, you know, you forgot you were pregnant and you ate a turkey sandwich. It, you know, he will try to tell you a bunch of lies like that. And none of them are true. 99.9% .9 of the time when you lose a baby, it had nothing to do with you. It was just, you know a misfire or, you know, a pregnancy that was not viable and it's not your fault. And I knew that, so I didn't blame myself. I didn't blame God. I wasn't mad at anybody. I was just up upset. I was just devastated because I wanted this baby so bad. <sighs> the next step after that is to get a DNC, which is a procedure that basically sucks out the pregnancy. Uh, David and I found really great comfort in the fact that there was never actually a baby in there because that would probably make me even more sad that there's a little soul, a little life in there and to you know save my own life, I would have to take theirs. And I'm not judging anyone for any of your opinions or you know what you would do or you know whatever. I'm just saying that that's something that would have made me even more upset. So I was, I felt very blessed that I had a full molar pregnancy and not a half. But even though there was not a baby in there, it's still sad when you feel like you have been given this dream. So it was our dream to have a second child. You feel like it was given to you and then it was taken away. It's still really upsetting and, you know, sad. So they schedule my surgery for that Monday. So it was a Thursday. They schedule it for the Monday and I go in for surgery. And I will talk about kind of um, what my recovery has been like. Um, after I woke up from surgery, which I was very scared to go into surgery, by the way, I've never had surgery before. And when I'm watching these doctor shows and a family member of theirs goes into surgery for something very routine, like a DNC, and they're all worried that they won't wake up or they won't come out. And I'm just like, go be in a weenie, you know? Like, of course they're gonna come out. This is routine. Doctors know what they're doing, blah, blah, blah. Um, but when it's you in that situation, it's completely different. And now that I have, you know, David, which is the love of my life and Simeon, which is my pride and joy, I just, I don't want to leave this earth. I, I don't want to die, you know? And so I was just scared because I, I want to keep living. I really like living, you know? But I got through the surgery just fine and I woke up and was in quite a bit of pain. I would call it probably like a five out of 10. Um, it felt like something was put up there that wasn't supposed to be up there. Something that was like too large to be up there. Um, yeah, it. if you had a painful first time, you know, I'm trying to keep this as PG as possible, but if you had a painful first time, 
it kind of felt like that, but worse. So that's what it felt like. And, but what I did notice right away is that I wasn't nauseous anymore. And that was like the first time in months that I wasn't nauseous. <sighs> so anyways, they give me an oxy at the hospital or surgery center or whatever. And I'm just like, it's hard for me to tell if that was worth it for me or not, but they made it seem like I was going to be in more pain later. Like it was painful now, but it was gonna be worse later. And so they wanted to give me this oxy uh, pain medication to help. And I was like, okay, whatever, I trust you guys, you know? Um, but I'm just saying I was not a fan of the oxy. It made me feel very heavy. It made me feel very sick. Um, it made me feel very drowsy and just like not there, you know, it did take the pain away though. So I guess that's good. But as I'm sitting here, like experiencing the symptoms of this oxy, I'm just thinking in my head, how do people get addicted to this? Like, this is horrendous. It's awful. But after a couple of hours, when that like sick, heavy, drowsy feeling wears off, you feel better and you don't have pain anymore. So I guess if I was living with chronic pain, I could totally see why people would get addicted to Oxy because it really does take your pain away wonderfully. It probably lasted me about 24 hours to take the pain away. The hardest part of my recovery, which TMI, but if you're watching this, you know, whatever, has been going number two after surgery. And I know, again, this is TMI, but whatever. It, the pain medication, the anesthesia just made it so, like, I couldn't go number two. Like, I was very backed up. And every time I tried to push to go number two, my uterus would contract and it would be extremely painful. And so I had to take a bunch of stool softeners, but it's still, when I finally got to go, was probably the third most painful thing that I've ever been through in my life. But once I finally did that, I have felt so much better and I honestly haven't had the time to feel sad about, you know, everything going on. I think I've, you know, done my fair share of grieving, but at the same time, I just feel like I am so excited and so happy to feel better. I have felt so yucky for so long and I know it's only two months and there are some of you out there that live with chronic pain or chronic sickness or you know your whole entire pregnancy is awful like this and I honestly couldn't imagine that. I couldn't. But needless to say I am so excited to be feeling better and feeling more like myself the, the past couple days, I've gotten a little overzealous, like picking up Simeon a lot, walking a lot, trying to do chores and stuff. And honestly, if I could give you any advice, it would be to like, relax after surgery, you know? Like your body just went through a trauma, you should probably relax. So don't be like me. <laughs> um, so I did experience a little more bleeding than I had been because I think I overdid it a little bit. I've just felt so much better. I, I wish I could put into words or like really explain how good I feel now, but I guess I won't bore you with that. But anyways, I have felt so much better. I am experiencing some bleeding, which is normal. And so like to be super honest with you, at nighttime I wear a diaper. I wear Depends, which I have left over from giving birth to Simeon, but it's just easier that way for me because I'm a period cup type of gal when I'm on my period, so the fact that I can't wear that is like kind of upsetting, um, but I would just rather wear a diaper so I know that I'm covered than like put a pad in some underwear and possibly ruin my underwear. I'm just not a fan of that. So anyways, during the nighttime I wear a diaper. And then during the day I wear like a pretty significant pad in my underwear. 
but I am, I'm just right now trying to focus on feeling better, being better, trying to focus more on my health. Um, I still have cravings, obviously, because I still have my pregnancy hormones running through my body. And so I still have cravings of Chinese food, mac and cheese, and honey crisp apples. Um, but, like, I guess I can just say that things are looking up. They're looking better. And I'm really excited about it. I guess I could just say that if you've lost a pregnancy, no matter how it happened, what happened, you're not alone. Like, I understand what you're going through, and it's really devastating. But I just, I have to believe, and I do trust that, you know, there is, you know, a rainbow after a storm. Like, there, something better is to come. Um, you know, I know that God has promised me a quiver full of children and, you know, I believe that. And so just because, you know, this baby didn't work out doesn't mean that I won't have another one or that a different one won't work out. And so right now, I guess I should mention, um, David and I cannot try for another baby, which was kind of the most upsetting part of all of this. We can't try for another baby for an unforeseeable amount of time. So we have to wait and I have to get my blood work done every, like twice a week, once a week, every month, like here on out um, to check to see what my pregnancy hormones are doing. Because um, they want to see them go down. If they're not going down, then they know that the tumor that was inside me is growing back and I have seen some women have to go through chemo to get rid of the tumor. Um, I'm hoping that's not me, of course, but we're taking it one day at a time here. Um, so yeah, we can't try for a while because if you get pregnant during this time, they don't know if the pregnancy hormones are from your new pregnancy or if they're from the tumor growing back. So we're gonna have to use protection and be careful for the next, you know, they estimate about five months, but you know, who knows? Um, so during this time, I'm going to attempt to just like get in better health. I'm gonna start going to the gym, try and get stronger. You know, who knows <laughs> what will actually happen? Like. I'm going to try to do that, but you know, you never know. But that's what I want to do because I just, I want to do something for myself. I want to heal my body, make my body better. I'm going to finish the rest of my makeup off camera. I'm sorry. When I talk and do my makeup, it takes me forever. Normally it does not take me this long, but I'm going to do the rest of my makeup and then say bye to you guys. So I'll be right back. All right, tea guys. So that is the end of this video. I know it was not the most like happy, <laughs> entertaining video to watch, but even if it just helped one person to know that as rare as this is, someone else is going through it too and feels your pain and just for you to feel like your pain is validated because it is. Your hurt is validated and uh, it's okay to not feel okay, basically. Um, my channel will, you know, I will start to have my more regular, happier content soon, but I just kind of wanted to, you know, let you guys know where I was at, let you guys know kind of what's been going on, and I also wanted to say thank you for all of your guys' thoughts and prayers. Like, I know a lot of my family and friends watch my videos, and so, you know, I that's another, I guess, blessing in disguise that has come from this hard time is, you know, we have family and friends that just really showed up for us, even neighbors, even, like, girls that I didn't even talk to in high school but were friends on social media like came out of the woodwork to show love and it really made me and David feel like we weren't alone in this and so I just really appreciate 
all the thoughts and prayers, good vibes, all the things. And so I thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you're interested at all in my happier content, uh, I have a bunch of other videos that you can watch <laughs> on my channel and uh, I will have videos to come. But subscribe to my channel if you're not already and I will see you guys in my next video.